Who you are and Seelicki from Seely, a hedgehog, take charge of the wasp that haunt the woods. Two other forest spirits who are not directly connected with Tapio should be mentioned here. The chosen, Kunnutar, or the golden Karehetar is asked to leave off. Melting gold or silver as a trapper has already put some into her bowl, according to Ganander. Ganander was a Finnish folklorist in the 18th century. Kareder was the patroness of foxes who brought them to the hunter's traps. Tapio's abode is Tapiola or Metsola, forest home or Havulinna, brushwood castle or the famous village of the woods. It was sometimes imagined that in the forest there were tree forts or castles of the of the forest in the fort of stone. A mere prayer was not always enough to appropriate Tapio and his numerous family. He needed an offering. Accordingly, a trapper asked them to take a fancy to his groats and salt and in return to send quantities of animals into his traps. Kuipana, the king of the forest, the brisk man of the woods, with a beard of tree moss, or the liberal mistress of the forest is desired to accept the hunter's tribute of salt and groats and send game into his traps. A hunter beseeches the grey-bearded old man of the forest and his wife, Mimerki, to make an exchange of gold. The hunter's is Swedish gold obtained by fighting in the wars while Tapios as we have seen, consist in his wild animals with precious furs. The bear, as a forest animal, was naturally enough nursed by Hongatar and rocked by Tuometar at the foot of a stunted fur. And the woodland sprites, Mielikki, Annikki and Tellervo, are requested by, uh, by bear hunter to muzzle their dogs, bear bears, till he can approach them. In order to obtain the game he covets, the hunter is ready to adopt any device. He is willing to go as Tapio's manservant or even as the boy who picks up the arrows. If Tapio will only be prop propitious or he asks the forest to marry his the hunter's men to the pleasant daughters of the woods, to the downy breasted little chicks. If Tapio happens to be asleep, he desires Anniki of the air of the fair complexion, who wears a down like shirt, to awake the king of the forest, or to wake up the forest mistress by playing a tune in her ear. On one occasion he invites the forest to play the sitzer, Kantele, so that the white animal shall lend an ear and be attracted towards himself. He invokes the old man of the knoll with a golden breast and who wears a hat of twigs, Mielikki, Tellervo, Nyrikki with the tall red cap, to show him the direction he ought to take by setting up posts and landmarks. He implores old Ukko with the rumpled beard, the hollow fur with a fur twig hat to beat the wilderness and make the trees resound with tuts in order to drive out the game for him. Or Tulikki, the delightful forest girl, is invited to chase out the animals from the slopes of the forest fort and to make a fence with her hands on each side of them to keep them on the right track. If obstacles inter intervene, she is to remove them. Remove them. He beseeches the famous beauty Tulikki, Pihleatar, short Tuometar and kindly Hongatar to chase wild animals in front of him, and if none are near to fetch them from Lapland, he desires the forest youth with a golden hat and the forest mistress Juonetar to send the best of their flock to his trapping places. If the animals are sluggish, he implores the lively Vitsari and Tellervo to take from Tapio's hill a whip of Rowan or a cattle scorch of Juniper with which to drive out the game. Lastly, he prays Mielki to set plenty of animals so near him that he can knock them over with a stick or seize them 
with his hands. If that is out of the question, she is to support his bow or steady his gun and thus enable him to shoot a squirrel and pay his tax. So there are lots of these type of hunting myths and spells in Finnish folklore. The white animals are represented as being kept in a magazine or a storehouse. So Mielikki, the famous golden buckle of the woods, is invoked to take the golden key at her side to open up your storehouse and let the silver and gold escape towards a hunter dressed in white. So this is a metaphor how the forest goddess releases the animals for the hunters to hunt. If you have any questions or um, you need to ask something about these deities, just leave the questions to the comments. Or Mielikki, the mother with the lovely face, is asked to open the honey chest and let loose a file of animals in front of a hunter. Should she be disciplined to do this herself, she is to send one of her servants. The queen of the forest, Kuritar, is requested to open her money magazine and let out the animals for hunter to catch in his traps. Annik, the girl with honeyed mouth, is asked to open the storehouse door and throw out the hunter's share on the boat of a tree. Then she is to spin a thread along with an arrow that can travel straight to the brow of a little squirrel. The forest mistress, Simander, is begged to make a din in the copper hills and to let the mountain storehouse be opened for the mountain cattle to run out and enter the hunter's traps. Anniki, who keeps the keys, and Eva, the little serving maid, are desired to open the magazine and let out the animals. In one instance, Tapia is humorously represented as carrying the game about with him on his own person. The good and splendid old man, the golden forest king, is implored to take his best and fattest ewes and rams from out of his shirt or his waistcoat and to poke his sheaves of flax into the traps of the supplic supplicating hunter. In a lesser degree, Tapio, as lord of wild beasts, or one of his people was implored to watch over flocks and, herd, and herds grazing in the woods and protect them from the attacks of bears. Thus Mielki and Tuonetar are requested to anoint a bear's paws with word, with word and its teeth with honey that it may not hurt the cattle. The king of the forest, Kuitua, and the benevolent Hongas are solicited to retain their dog from injuring the herds. The forest king, Kuippana, is suppli supplicated to control his bastard son, which is also known as the bear, and to stick a mushroom up its nose to prevent its getting scent of the pasturing night kind. The good mistress, Hongatar, and the observant Tapiotar are urged to keep a bear in check and prevent it doing harm. The forest Nikkinäki, or Tapio, the golden king of the woods and the kindly mistress are invoked to take care of the herds grazing in the forest. In the capacity of herd girls, the tiny lassie Pihleatar and the lovely Kateatar are desired to cut a branch from the back of Tapio's hill and with it drive the cattle from the woods back to their own home. Anniki is one of Tapio's daughters and she's interesting because she's connected to weaving. She's, her symbol is the spinning wheel, so in one way she's also the goddess of fortune telling and future, or she's like the three norns in Norse mythology, that she knows, she knows things. Evil m might come from Metzola, it is usual evident is the delightful Metzola and it, it was full of honey. A bee is asked to fetch honey from Metzola, luscious stuff from Tapiola from which an ointment may be made 
and water, the maker of salves, conducted them a whole summer in Metzola for delightful honey is there from which he made the unguents. So that was the end of the forest chapter. So I am reading Magic Songs of the Finns. This is from Elias Lundrut, written in 1880 and translated into English by John Abercrombie in 1898. It's one of my, my favorite books at the moment. So you might know Elias Lundrut because he wrote Kalevala, not Kalevala is more of his own creation. It doesn't have, it actually doesn't have that much to do with fit, Finnish folklore, but I suppose these magic songs are a bit closer to what the Finnish folklore actually was. I think the next part where we are going to go is the spells and the magic. So what it comes to part of the bears and how bears they were originally seen as these magical powerful beings but as you can see what I just read when um, agriculture became a bigger thing and also Christianity, Lutheranism and Catholicism in the Middle Ages bear was now demonized. So uh, uh, an animal that was once highly respected become, became a less favorable animal. It's really sad, but yeah, that's the way it is. I think the next chapter is wizards and sorcerers. Just sipping my tea here. The Finns possess a considerable number of words and evidence for wizard sorcerer, witch, seer, ecstatic, and the like. Some of these are native words like noita, a sorcerer, tietomies, or tietäte, knower, loitsia, the, re the reciter of a magic song, loitsu, arpoja, a diviner, näkiä, a seer, myrrysmies, or intomies, an ecstatic, lumoja, a stupe st stupefier, Lukia, a reciter, Katselia, an observer, Laulumies, a songman, Ampuja, an archer, Kukkaromies, a backman. Others are of foreign origin like Mahtimies or Mahtaja, Gat, Mats, Magd, Might, Magician, Taikuri, he that uses Taika, Got, Taking Stoken, a wonder, Velho, a witch, a wizard. Is probably an ear an early um, Taikur is probably an early Slav loan, while a latter one is Popamis, a priestman from the Russian pop. Though between these appellation appellations no hard and fat line can be drawn, dividing them into good and bad categories, yet on the whole injuries or black magic would generally be the work of the Noita the Ampuja, the Velho, and the Kukkaromies. So there is a very long tradition of shamanism in Finland. Beneficial or white magic, like the great bulk of the magic songs, was used to for eject, ejecting evil spirits of disease, etc., and would be practiced by a loitsia, a tietäjä, a lukia or a laulumies. In some instant instances, by a lumoja, näkiä, or an arpoja. Yet we have an example of an exorcist terming himself a noita and a lap. As a rule, there is nothing in magic songs to show what sort of a wizard the reciter of it might be, so as his function is to drive away disease, I shall term him the exorcist. The sorcerer, noita, the fortune teller. Arpoja is said to have been born behind the limits of the north, on the flat land of Laps, on a bed of fur, bro fur bogs, in a pillow of stone. The sorcerer, the, uh, 
the sorcerer has a nose like an eagle's beak and wears a tall hat. Sorcerers, when they exercise their arts, are naked and without a stitch of clothes. They are said to drink a water from a pool in the crop of his horse, and in drinking to make it his. The offensive weapons of the sorcerer, the wizard, Theatre and the archer are knives of iron, pointed into and shooting instruments. Sorcerers and wizards use arrows and witches, Velho, have knives of steel, but these expressions are not usually to be understood literally. They imply sickness, disease or any injury caused by the spells of a knife or a nail into the footprint of an enemy to do him harm and there is a vague allusion to roasting and melting an image, into which pins or nails would first be struck. The arrows of a sorcerer are said to be made of the wood of a tall fir growing on the hill pane, and he is quite indifferent where he shoots them, or they were made from chips of a huge oak that were taken to a smithy by a scroundo, who made the arrows to be stitched and plusery into man, Sudden sickness in a horse and hell, uh, elf shots, chat spikes, in kind, or from the chips of a fiery oak they were made into arrows by his son. Wizards, sorcerers, witches and diviners are to be found at every gate, at every fence, along every road, in a damp dells, near water and in fact everywhere. It would have been interesting to live during these times, like when I think about the time when I would have liked to live in ancient Finland, I would choose the Viking era, because then there was all this research <laughs> in every corner. Not so much in the medieval era, but definitely in the Viking era. A cursing spell may be repeated in a whining or a mumbling voice, and it is said to be bitten off with the teeth, just as one might bite off a length of a thread from a clue hold in the mouth. Words, spells or magic songs are brought from the north, from Lapland. An exorcist, an exorcist requires a fluent mouth, a ready tongue and pliant fingers. In order to make him into a wizard, a skillful man and a singer, an exorcist was an exorcist was washed naked three times one summer night on the nighter stone of a handmill by his mother. Probably to harden and strengthen him, the stone itself being hard and strong. Another boasts that he is the son of Northerner, Pohjolainen, was rocked by a girl of Turia and was cradled by a lap. The want of another is that he is the youngest son of a sorcerer, the calf of an old diviner. He can repeat a spell learned from his father to obtain a favorable, fin a favorable wind. So a lot of these Finnish shamans, they were known especially for the way they could um, control winds. So they, they would help fishermen to control winds and then when they would be sailing they could control the winds and there's been some speculation of course how, ma how many of them were men and how many of them were women what I have studied it seems to be pretty equal so there was which woman and which men so there really wasn't much difference in the genders what it came to witchcraft in Finland. It's not like in pop culture which is usually a woman but definitely we had male shamans and female shamans here. And it's the same in Estonia and in Sweden and Scandinavian countries. And I suppose it was the same everywhere. <laughs> Back in the days. Where was I? He depends on his father's strength of mind and ar armaments, but he also inherits power from his mother. 
An exorcist smutter could bring back stolen milk from Mana, from Tuonela, from sorcerers. And what she did can do likewise, another brags that sharp frost has no effect on him or on any of his family and kin. In fact, he kills frost and takes from it clothing with which to protect himself. If he has need of magic songs, he will go and learn from uh, from the old wife of Pohyola and also how to use an eagle's claws. I am guessing that the old wife of Pohyola is Lohi. At a later date, an exorcist wishes the creator, whose words and phrases are holy and well arranged, to speak for him, and God is asked to save a person from the effect of village spells and incantations with words framed by the creator and prescribed by the Holy Ghost. By his song and exorcist boast he can split the shoulders of a witch or of a sorcerer, by his leg and bisect his jawbone and feed him on snakes and toads, by singing he can bring a big skin over the eyes of a sorcerer's and dog skin over their ears. By means of his song he turn, turns the best singers into the worst and puts strong gloves and shoes on their hands and feet, meaning that they are now bound and helpless. He sings sorcerers, wizards, witches and archers with their knives, arrows, etc. into the mighty Rutia or Turia rabbits. By the power of his song, a wolf is bitted, or a bear is changed. He boasts that he can milk adders, handle snakes, and can arm one thousand men in one night, can beat wolves and shackle, beers, shackle bears. As comrade, he has one of his people who is, who is of great strength and will give him hardness of body. Elsewhere he, elsewhere he brags that he has a sandy skin, a hide of iron slag, a body made of steel or one taken from the branches of fir. In fact, from his possessing a sandy skin and iron-colored hide, it is useless for a wasp to try to sting him. One exorcist describes how skillful he is at surgical operations. Another wants that he is a man without his like and a famous son. So a lot of the shamans would like to boast with their powers. But the exorcist is not always in boasting mood and does not rely solely upon bounds. Sometimes he is far from being overconfident. In his difference, he refers to himself as an unfortunate lad as a poor boy. He lays great stress on the difficulty of the task, ejects, ejecting evil spirits of disease. He asks how he is to proceed, how he is to protect him, himself. He pleads complete ignorance of the cause of an illness or accident. And if he is not afraid, it is because he has put on a shirt of defense or something of the short. In the latest period he can do nothing without the grace and aid of God, the true creator, or he speaks with the Lord's good bread and washes the sick man with the blood, with the blood and tears of Jesus. He acts with the creator's leave and by the mercy of the Lord. So these stories were collected in the 19th century, and Finland was a Christian country, in the 19th century and these were basically the last this was the last chance to collect any folk tales that was left so you can see different layers in Finnish mythology there's the pagan layer and then there is the Christian layer and then there is a time where the Christian and the pagan stuff are mixed which is actually most of the spells and the stories So you do come across characters like Jesus and Virgin Mary in 
in this uh, bit. Which in itself is actually quite interesting. I think there is a part about the creator that I could read to you. The term God, Yumala, Hi guys. originally meant the sky, the How sky are you spirit. All doing? And in course Sorry, of time, five minutes it came late. to mean God in a I am using sense. my backup Applicable laptop to a variety because it has of a deities. bit of microphone, but it's also a little bit slower is than the is one that I normally use. Now, he is, is the humpback from the doing? home of gods. I am going to read you a passage from the magic songs of the Finns. An exorcist exclaims, may help from the gods arise and that's from the nourishing cat mother aid in a charm to be used couch. when heating a vapor She's bag. Funny that way. It is said that the gods above and the earth, mothers down below, use hot baths. The Virgin Mary is implored to Tapio restore health the divinity before the rising of, of the, the sun. One of the most popular of Finnish gods was certainly Tapio, the hunter, dependent on him for game, not so much for consumption as for their valuable furs which could be sold or bartered. The sheep and cattle, of which every family had a few, were pastured in the forest. The dawning of and the god, welfare god and safety dawn, god for of wild dawn, beasts and the lord of the horses, was therefore largely con is con called a god contingent that cleans on the mangers. goodwill of the forest divinities. As a rule, however, the, the word god, was especially when qualified the golden by the games of the forest, with almighty beard, beard seems to refer to the Christian god. Whenever this is so, the exorcism is not older than the middle the of the 12th beard. century. The feather had the that glory of the woods. Uh, catalysm arrived Sometimes he was simply called the forest, or Kuippana, the long-necked. Unless the term Kuitua, is substitution Kuitua, for Nikki an older hidden name, Hitsi as undoubtedly is sometimes the case. That to a him fragment of some lost legend appears to be preserved in a charm against his hymns and harsh, rams or where it tropping, says, trooping when ears countries and were his upheaved, gold and silver and even as his up sheaves of flax. But in the a riddle, Tapio's pool is a made for a tree. In so all these in trees and food. animals, they were this called as Tapio's kettle, of Tapio's animals, Tapio's kingdom. They're all umbrella terms for him. have taken part in the creation of the world. several when the hunter exclaims, which why is the great partly creator on her works, frame of mind, the giver of games and rage, to supplant that he never gives at all, he is her. probably thinking of Tapio, though the name of the forest god is replaced by that of the creator. When kindly disposed, she was merely or when another the hunter beseeches and was pictured the dearest, dearest god, the ruler of the earth, to give him abundance. When unkind and deaf to his prayers, she was Kuriki, the deaf. The deaf was black and terrible in appearance, being horribly dressed so in that rags, means the, that while the rings uh, and bangles chat. on her arms Which were Which Finnish deities are the ones that you are interested? Witches. I, the name when of it comes to myself, a charcoal wife, may have, have been assigned to her for the similar the area that I am studying. At so one perhaps moment it was given it's her by then it's charcoal slowly, burners, as she is not connected with Wild it has been well among in the one passage because I made mentioned a Hongas lecture Hongara series about her Velama daughter Nahti was a natural name, name for about the wife that, of the king of the forest. You can find a link there from the seems to be described as a whole of fur video the description hat. But yeah, it it really depends this on what is the is subject also that I'm studying. The Teutonic at, folklore in Sweden, at the moment, Denmark and Stiermark. Definitely, it's, the forest it's, wife. Skogs Interesting, Mufra, and there are lots of different varieties. Or what Wildfrau is pictured in the popular imagination as being hollow behind, like a hollow. When another hunter beseeches dear Scott the rules of the earth to give him abundance of wild animals, mentioning at the same time that he does not prostrate himself merely to be given stumps of trees, he must have animals again. When God of the Creator is invoked to watch over a herd at pasture, it is quite possible that new names have been worked into an older incantation. Some of the songs in which the name of God is employed 
appear to belong to the transition period between heathendom and Christianity, for his name is invoked in a way that clearly shows the exorcist was no professional theologian. The aerial god, the spirit of Lord Jesus, is described to harness his colt to take a seat in his ornament slight and drive two bones and loosened veins in order to join them together and wear a bone was broken to fasten in another god the father jesus the lord of air that knows how to throw a bullet and to recite a charm for stopping bullets is invited to let water fall on the touch hole of an enemy's gun so that it will not flash and go off god the creator is desired to recite a charm to heal a sick man and to assuage his pain with formulas that are holy and well arranged. In a charm for making a healing, a heal and to assuage his pain with formulas that are holy and well arranged. In a charm for making a healing a vapor bath, God, the father of the air, is asked to enter the steam to restore health to the sick person and give him repose. But he is to do it secretly, without being heard by a wordless wretch and without the knowledge of the village people. God the Creator is prayed to give luck and contentment. He is to build around the supplicant's property an an iron fence, a stone castle reaching from the earth to the sky. God is round the supplicant's property an iron fence, a stone castle reaching from the earth to the sky. God is round the supplicants. God is called the oldest of spell reciters and the creator the oldest of wizards. The creator is the creator is desired to come and exercise. God to come and speak and aid a man in overthrowing his enemies and envious persons. And the creator of and the Creator's golden wetlets is implored to come and speak on man's behalf, but it is also to stop the judge's ears, to bright, them, to bright the juryman and bind silks across the sheriff's, eye, sheriff's eyes. Why the Creator has a cock with a golden rattles is explained, perhaps by a riddle. One cock is an iron cock, the second a copper cock, and the third a golden cock. The iron cock split the ground, the copper cock cut the sea, the golden one divided the sky. Answer, a plow, a ship, the sun, though it may be reminiscence of the thunderbird as mentioned above. At a later period, in order to staunch blood, an exorcist could say, may the word of the god become a bar, may, may trust in the maker be a pluck, if blood should flow in rapid drops, may the Creator hold it fast, may God say his hold of it. But when he continues, let some of kindly Jesus flesh a bit from the side of the Lord be a plug for the fearful hole, a dam for the evil gap. He is only adapting an older heathen formula to, to the new terminology. So too, when the Lord is asked to fling his gloves, down as a stopper on the fearful hole from new fate. May the maker's lock be lock, may the Lord's words be a bar, that the milk to the ground sent flow nor the guiltless blood upon the dirt, despite the nature of God against the intentions of the blessed. An exorcist declares he can do nothing without the great and help of God, the Creator. He throws himself on his God. Who, abandon, who abandons not the good and virtuous? He declares that he, that the arrows of a sorcerer can be extracted by virtue of the word of God by the spirit of the Lord's decree. The bread that he exhales is the bread of the Lord. He wants that he emits is that of the Creator. The water he employs is the blood of Jesus, and he asks. Is a man to be put to death without God's mercy, without the true Creator's leave? A diviner begins, I pray from the Creator leave, assistance from the Lord I beg. 
Tell the diviners cheer, O God, dividing cheer, declare to me whence the calamity has come. And he finishes, if the diviner, if the divining cheer speaks truth, its reputation is enchanced. The divining cheer is raised aloft to the knees of the holy God. Charm the quiet child begins, lull the child to sleep, O God, cause it to slumber, Mary dear. On going to bed, one may repeat a lorica like the following. May the earth be good defense, the omnipotent a guard. May the creator lock the door. May a saint draw to the bolt. May Jesus be a shield, Mary a sword. In preparing a bandage, an exorcist says, Let the maker silk be ligature, the cloak of the Lord be a covering. Let the word of God be a bolt, the verse of the Lord be a coverlet. May the Creator's mercy grant, may God's word bring about what the wound shall not inflame. The Creator nature, God, that dwells above is invoked to save a person from incantations and spells by means of words framed by the Creator, prescribed by the Holy Ghost. Fire is said to have been created by God, to be born of Jesus' word, and worked by the Virgin Mary, and as souls are said to be prepared behind the stars, they are desired to trickle down from the mount of the gracious God, or from the beard of the from the beard of the blessed one. How interesting. So all these Christian deities <laughs> uh, they were used to replace the old pagan deities in the spell making. Let's talk about uh, spell making. The disease. The disease an exorcist has to drive away is either sent by God, the creator, an idea evidently of late date, or is caused by the spells of a sorcerer for reward which is undoubtedly the older belief. When an illness is affected by the spells of an enemy, it is said to be the result of human art, and is thus distinguished from a natural malady. Disease in general is pictured as a huge and hideous devil, or as a bogey, riena. It is termed a, a hisi, a devil, a filthy lempo, an uninv uninvited shape, muoto, a hound of Hisi, a monster of the earth, and next is quite astonished that a mouthless, eyeless, toothless, tongueless creature like rickets can see to stuck, suck to eat. Sometimes an illness may have been ordered to attack a man by its father, mother, brothers or sisters. On the other hand, it is invited to approach and recognize the evil it has done on a pain of a report being made to its mother, who would be greatly vexed thereby, for after seeing the harm it has wrought, it is capable of feeling ashamed, and of repairing and making amends for it. An exorcist may even treat it as he would a boy, and threaten to flog it with a Roman shoots and tips of fur. The person who sends an illness or disease by means of spells is called its master or mistress, and so the malady may be told to go home and break the heed of its master or mistress, or to injure in some terrible way the individual that sent it, such as by giving her veins a sudden squeeze, making her blood pipes pipe a tune. A sickness may also come from a grave or from the spirit of the departed. From this may be inferred that the fiends sacrificed to the manes of their ancestors, who were occasionally dissatisfied and then avenged themselves by sending disease on their descendants. Ailments are also brought by wind and water. Once upon a time three attacks of sickness came along a swamp, along firm ground and by water. The first had a neck like a pole, the second a neck like an arch, and the third was the worst attack but it's not further described. Or three attacks 
of sickness came along a swamp, along a winter road, and along springs of water, but on this occasion the worst had come along the swamp. So pain, disease, and sickness of any kind were generally thought as evil spirits with human pro propensities, yet they can be wound up into a ball and thrown into the sea. An exorcist puts them into his wallet and takes them to the three luonotars who col collect them in a copper box. And Kivutar, the maid of pains and sicknesses, poised these in a little kettle on the top of a hill of pain. So Kivutar is not somebody who takes the pain to herself, but she's the one who heals the pain. She's the one who um, shapes the pain so that the human doesn't suffer. So she's a, a helper goddess, even though she can sound a bit scary. Okay, I feel like I'm losing my voice after all this reading. And I think I will make another one of these, uh, these live streams very soon. So thank you for joining me. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye.